Hi, everyone. Welcome. I'm Arthur King, Art Gallery Coordinator here at Dale Valley College, and we're here today to talk to Hannah Tandetta. Hannah Tandetta is an artist and art historian here at Dale Valley College. Hi, Hannah. Hi. Hi, welcome in. Thank you very much for taking the time today to talk to us. Um, we'd like to learn a little bit about you and your relationship with DBC and your students. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about where did you study? I studied at UC Irvine in the 70s. That was the time when performance and conceptual art were coming to the fore. And I worked with some of the seminal artists in that field um, in West Coast performance, like Chris Burden. Marvelous, marvelous. That must have been quite an experience. Mm -hmm. oh, it was. And it really um, formed the way I think about art, both in teaching art history, which I do at DVC, and in studio practice. And if I taught a studio class, it would operate the same way. And that is that the idea, the concept is the art, mm -hmm. and then whatever comes out of it comes out. So it could be an object, it could not be an object. But it's the idea that's central. That must, be, that must be quite something for our students today to try to wrap their brains around. It is. It is. It's a new one for some of my students. Okay. Not for all. Well, for all this, other, for that type of work, what made you want to pursue a career as an artist? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I can't say what made me want to do it, but I've always done it. I mean, I did art as a kid, was really encouraged by my parents, um, given lots of art classes, sculpture class, welding class, all these things. And then when I went away to college and that was my major, uh, it became a much more serious issue for them. They were not as encouraging at that point. And then when I pursued a graduate degree, that was worse. But too late, damage done, here I am. <laughs> you, you're now, bam, you're, you're the artist. I know. Well, well, through all that all that time and the education and the years of practice that you put in to your craft, um, how does that work for you today? What does being an artist mean to you today after all that journey? Well, it's interesting because, um, again, the emphasis was always on the concept, on conceptual art as a thing you did and not a thing you made. Um, and so I'm really off and on with the art making. Um, there have been vast stretches of time when I made didn't make art as an object, but I, I do other art forms. I do theater, I do music. And um, so my creative feeling would get channeled into um, making music or um, doing theater pieces or something like that. Um, especially when I had little kids running around and not a lot of extra space in this house. So, um, you know, for, so I'm kind of off and on with the object making, but I also take an incremental uh, approach. And like behind me back there, you see a piece I did in the 80s that is one of those things that you would do a tiny, tiny bit at a time, just a taste every day, because that thing that looks like a quilt is actually hand colored postage stamps. And so I would like have the really sharp little pencils and paints and paint the little teensy postage stamp and just do it over and over and over until I had enough to make a great huge quilt out of them. So. So would you say that um, that approach is integral to your um, aesthetic and your, your practice as an artist? I would say it is not integral, but it is convenient. When you are a big fat multitasker, as so many of us are, um, it's a good way to work. You can pick it up, you can put it down. You can pick it up, you can put it down. You can let it rest. You can come back. It's not something that has to be all done now, like if I were making clay sculpture or, you know, or having to go to a studio or having to maintain a lot of equipment. Those things are kind of out for me, but like today I'm doing and have since lockdown been doing a um, photograph every day. And so that's what you posted on the website, right? So um, 
in teaching, I began to think about what landscape is. And it's not just a picture of a place, it's an idea about place and its meaning, right? It, and so you have to have an idea when you go outside that informs what you do. And so since lockdown started, I go into my garden every single day and find something and then I publish it. And I don't do it in a fancy way. I do it with my phone. I don't do a lot of fancy Photoshopping and editing, just a little basic cropping and adjusting. And then I publish it to my friends and my friends respond. They publish their own gardens. They publish their libraries. I wish they would not publish their food. It's kind of not my favorite thing. But, you know, have you noticed that when people publish things they're eating, it sometimes looks like barf. I've had to reprimand a few friends. Sometimes the colors don't translate well, it's true. Well, it just looks like glop. So no, <laughs> I would rather not see people's food. But if it's growing in my garden, I might just put it right out there. Nice, okay. So would you say that's really part of your, uh, your studio practice is uh, that sort of uh, minimalist approach to handling or reworking the subject. Yeah, you return to the same thing because it's never the same river twice, is it? It isn't. And I've done a lot of projects that operate that way, where you, you know, the one that you have seen already on, um, in one of the previous faculty shows was a series of books that was 100 walks, where I would walk the same landscape every single day I worked and photograph what struck me along the way. And again, that was never the same twice. Even though I walked the same path, it was never the same. And what your mind notices, what you focus on, how it looks to you, what you then do with it. Do I zoom in? Do I back off? Do I look at the colors? Do I look at the composition? Do I look at the message? It's always something different. Very nice, very nice. So has um, the, uh, your practice changed or evolved over time? This isn't probably something you've been doing always. How has that evolved for you? How has it evolved? Well, it had to embrace digital media and social media. So that's the evolution. It went from pencils and postage stamps. <laughs> and before that I did Xerox. I, was, I did a lot of Xerox art and, and things like that. Um, uh, into um, photographing with my phone and having it, but I think that emphasis on the lack of preciousness and the lack of uh, being really valuable, that connects all the way back to my first year in college when I studied Duchamp, right? Duchamp and his ready-mades, where any object that I choose is a work of art, right? Because of the idea, because I chose it. And that's basically what I'm doing. I'm choosing, choosing, choosing. Thank you, Marcel, wherever you are. Oh, marvelous, marvelous, marvelous. So um, who is your community of artists or fellow creatives? Do you have someone that you like to emulate or to, to be like? Um, or how do you feel yourself as uh, in comparison to your other fellow artists that you uh, share your work with? That is a very ultra complicated question because I actually pursue so many art forms. I sing, I sing in groups. And so the people I emulate are the people whose voices I wish I had, or the people who are such awesome musicians that I wish I was them. Or, you know, so I'm always improving and beating myself up and trying really hard to be a better musician, a better singer. And in terms of making visual art, uh, again, I look back to my forefather, Marcel Duchamp, and the professor I had who turned me on to him. Uh, her name's Moira Roth. She is still with us. And she was my first professor from the first day of school at Irvine. And we still know each other now. She's a real eminent art historian, especially um, in feminist art and performance art. So there are many ways when I'm being an art historian that I'm trying to be Moira, 
And the other person who's a big influence on me is Phil Leader, who started Art Forum. He was also a professor of mine. And when my friends found out that I was teaching art history, they went wild asking, do you walk around and wave your arms like Phil Leader? And I, well, if I were allowed to lecture, I would. What I would not do is um, chain smoke during the lecture. I, I don't hold with unhealthy habits. Um, but I would like to be like him because Dan, brilliant, just brilliant because he could put a slide on the screen and the entire room, which is packed to the rafters, just goes because <gasps> he has set it up verbally and gotten you all ready. And then when you see it, oh my God. And that I would like my visual art to do as well. I don't know if I ever get there because uh, openings and things like that are not the same kind of interchange, which is why singing is so awesome because you stop and everybody claps. They love it, right? Or they stand up and scream or something like that. And so that feedback's instantaneous. And lecturing, same deal, right? Live lecture, if I get you, I know I got you. If you're sleeping, I also know that. Yeah, there, there is that. So um, tell me, for yourself and these, the people that you've known and the art making that you've done and the years of practice you've put in, um, what does the role of artist in society mean to you? Well, right now, artists really are important people because here we are stuck in our houses and there are so many issues floating out there in the world. Are you getting a meme where people are asking, am I in hell? Have you seen that one? Occasionally. Yeah. Or having fun. Yes. And I think the artist and the creative mind and the expressive mind are the modes that we have for coping. And, um, you know, anybody can go out in their garden with their phone and take a picture of it. And anyone can do it like I'm doing it every day and post it on their social media. That's not, I'm not holding myself up as some kind of genius. And I don't even think that's important. But um, I get a lot of appreciation back from the people with whom I'm sharing. And um, some of it's kind of surprising. You know, like, really? Really? Because um, it's it's such a tiny gesture, but it, it's now continued how many months, right? It's ridiculous. So what's our role? I think different artists have different roles. Some of us are like crusaders for social justice. And I'm just like from each according to ability to each according to need, right? Thank you, Karl Marx. Just so you can call me a Marxist. That's fine with me. Um, it means that we each contribute however we are able and we each get back whatever we are ready to receive. Nice. nice. Kind of global. Yeah, that's wonderful. Uh, what's the piece, what's the best piece of advice that you've ever been given and who gave it to you? This is the one question that you had on that list that I wasn't sure how to answer. So I don't know who gave it to me. I think it might have been my husband because he had one of those bumper stickers that said question authority and I was always pretty sure that was wrong. My motto is ignore authority and that is the best piece of advice. Well Hannah, thank you very much for your time today, um, spending some time in talk, talking to us and giving us all this wonderful information, and for our students, giving us a little insight into who you are um, as a person and as, as a creative individual. So thank you for that. Thanks, Arthur. It's been You're great welcome. talking to you.